Okay, I'm Chris Avina with American Outdoor News, and today we are speaking to Phil Smith, the president of National African American Gun Association, who uh, is actually one of our new partners here at American Outdoor News. Phil, thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. Hey, Chris, glad to be here. Honored to get a chance to talk to you and uh, have a nice little chat today. Can you tell us a little bit about how you started uh, your organization? Sure, sure. Um, back in uh, 2015, I was working just like, you know, normal day, you know, you're at the job. And two of my coworkers said, hey, Phil, we're going to go shoot on Saturday. And this was like a, a Monday. And I said, where are you guys going to shoot at? And go, oh, we're going to a, a local indoor range. And I said, oh, well, you guys have a good time. Great. And I just kind of shrugged, shrugged it off and went, kept on working and typing. And then about an hour later, they came up to me and said, hey, Phil, we want you to go with us. And I said, nah. But they literally bugged me every day up until Thursday where I finally said, okay, I'll go. And when I went, I had the best time of my life. I had a chance to shoot everything. They let me rent, you know, AKs, you know, um, 357, every caliber possible. I stayed about three and a half, four hours with the guys. Um, and then I just kind of said, you know what, I'm going to come next week by myself to the same range. And I did. And I had an even better time. And that's when the light bulb went on in my head. I said, you know, if I can have this much fun by myself and with friends, I know other folks in my community would love to have a chance to shoot a gun and, and to learn how to shoot a gun and learn all the, the intricacies of shooting a, a firearm, how to hand, how to hold it, how to stand, muzzle management, isosceles versus weaver, all that good stuff. And uh, so I went back home, did some research, and I said, okay, let's put together an organization that our folks will relate to and have some history in it that uh, they can kind of really connect to. And, and, that's, and that's how it started. And I, I'll be honest with you, when I started, my wife said, no, you know, nobody's going to join. All my friends are like, ah, nobody's going to do it. And uh, I thought I might get 300 people or so for the whole year. I had 300 people the first month. That's amazing. The next month, I had 1,000 people join. No advertising, no nothing, just word of mouth. And by the end of the first year, I had over 8,000 people, over 8,500 people, just strictly word of mouth. And that's how it started. And it's grown every every year since then. And now we're over 40,000 unofficially. Um, and we're just growing. Um, about 1,000 new members join every month now. Uh, we have over 125 chapters nationwide. We have members in every state, um, California, Connecticut, Florida, Wyoming, North, North Dakota, Texas, you name a state, we have members there, multiple members. So we're, that's something I'm very proud of. Hmm. And our membership, just to let you know, is very, very diverse. We Obviously, we're a black organization, but we have members from every um, phase of, of the community, white, Latino, Asian. They're very active. Um, they take a, uh, a proud role within the organization. That's something I think that people really feel good when they come to our organization, because you can be who you are. Mm -hmm. You can be Republican, you can be Democrat, you can be rich, poor, dumb, uneducated, grumpy <laughs> in a lot of cases, um, and be yourself. You don't have to walk alike, talk alike, and, and, and sound alike to be a, a member of our organization. We give you a hug, a high five. We look you in the face and say, welcome, brother, regardless of who you are. Welcome, sister. And um, that's what people really feel comfortable when they look at our organization because they know they can come to our, our neck of the woods, so to speak. And have a good time, learn about shooting, because that's, that's our main focus. Safety, 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 and training, 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 and more safety and more training. That, that's our core goal. And we're, I think we're very good at, at that right now. We're getting to be very good at that. Uh, taking newbies, because 70% of our folks coming through the door are what we call newbies. They've never shot before. Or, or they shot so long ago, decades ago, that they're coming back and they're just trying to learn the, how to use a gun. So we're, we're very proud of the organization, the way it's been built so far, and trying to take it to another level. Now, you're based in Georgia. Yes, sir. You, yes, sir. But, but you're originally from California. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a California kid, born and raised, bread and butter in a little town called Vallejo. Um, about 50,000 folks when I was, you know, coming up. Um, very small town, very close. Everybody knew each other. And I live on what is called the south side of Vallejo, South Vallejo. And it was very, very, uh, it was a great time being a kid in that, in that neighborhood. It was a poor neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Our blue collar, or what we call no collar, just folks just trying to survive, just trying to make it. Um, but it was close knit. It was a good mix of black, Latino, Asian, um, you name it, white. We were all stuck together. We're, we're kind of like the, the the little rascals, but dirty. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we would go through the neighborhood, you know, just every 
every possible uh, background was uh, was in our group. We go over to a friend's house and have tacos one day. The next day, we're going over to the Rosenbergers to have another meal. I mean, it was just a very close knit, and I'm close with all those guys even to this day. But it was you, a. Go ahead. Did you ever pick up a firearm when you lived in California, or it was just no, when you moved no. to Georgia? You know, in our house, my father and my mother, they weren't anti-gun or pro-gun. It was just, we didn't talk about guns. I was just trying to chase girls and uh, and uh, have a good like time. Like every other sports. kid. <laughs> yeah, like every other kid. I was just a normal, a normal upbringing. But guns were not part of that discussion um, at all until I moved to Georgia in 2002. And that's when it was a different culture that I got put into. Um, and I had to really ask myself questions that I had been given to me, I, or I thought I had the answers to prior to moving to Georgia. Because in California, it's a very, I'm not going to say anti-gun state, but it's, they make it tough. Yeah. They make it very tough to buy a gun for just a normal uh, uh, citizen. In Georgia, it's just the opposite. They make it very seamless. It's easy. If you're a law-abiding citizen, you don't have a felony. If you don't have any felonies, you can go ahead and, and purchase sure. a gun. And um, it was a different culture. Everybody has guns in Georgia. The mothers give their daughters guns for, for, for graduating presents. The fathers take their sons hunting. It's kind of, it's a ritual. It's kind of a, a rite of manhood for a lot of families. And it's just, a, it's a healthy, positive view that I was exposed to. And I had to really kind of say, you know what? These are nice folks. Regardless, I don't care if it's black, white, everyone uh, had a, a good, healthy perspective of firearms. And, I, I, and that's when the, I guess, even before I even went to that, that gun range, that process started moving in my head where I had to say, you know what? firearms okay if used in the correct way with the, the the correct training and that's the one thing that we were able to um that that i was able to expose myself to and, and definitely get a uh, a process to start you know embracing firearms and, and the second amendment well i think one of the things that drew me to your organization one of the things i like best about it is you're not just a gun group so to speak mm -hmm. you you actually take the people out to the range you show them how to shoot, you show them gun safety, you show right. them how to handle a firearm, how not to handle a firearm. Right. Uh, and it's really uh, like gun safety and gun training that a lot of places, uh, you know, people go out and they buy a gun, they don't know the first thing about guns. Joining an organization like yours really brings a whole new aspect to a well-rounded uh, gun owner. Yeah, and one thing we're really proud of at, at uh, NAG is that we have a process. And, and to your point, you just don't grab a gun and run out and start shooting with our organization. You sit down, you're given what is called a new member orientation class. You learn about the history of um, the firearm, uh, particularly in the African-American community. We talk about <coughs> other individuals that came before you, the Buffalo Soldiers, Tuskegee Airmen, um, that have fought, you know, utilizing the gun for our, for our emancipation and freedom. Oh, also, wow. you, we you give focus, a whole history. Yeah, we give the whole history. So you're inundated with information before you touch that gun. Then we, we kind of transition into, okay, now you know your history a little bit. Now let's talk about the gun. This is a firearm. We go over the four rules. We get that in, uh, ingrained in their head. Then we start talking about safety, safety, and then more safety. By the time we go to the range, um, they have a, a full breadth of information on what to do and not to do. And obviously, all of our training sessions are overseen by a group of, um, of uh, certified instructors. And uh, those certified instructors are very, very careful in terms of the process, how to stand, you know, understanding the rules and regulations. We have a range safety officer as well. So we're very, very safe and knock on wood for after five years, they've never had any type of incident because we're extremely careful before we go out to the range with our folks. Because most of our folks, 70% are, are newbies. So we have to really make sure that in that process of taking them from the classroom and theory to the to the range that they have a lot of information being given to them. Hmm. Now, in your experience, um, who is the more accurate shooter, a man or a woman? Oh, man, you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> um, I would say women are better shooters. I would say so as well. They're, they're patient. They don't have the macho chip coming in the door, think I know everything. They're very- No receptive. ego. <laughs> no ego at all. And when they learn, they just really focus on the basic, just like you're instructing them to, to do. So I would say hands down, the women generally are, are better shooters uh, overall. And how the guys are gonna beat me up on, on, uh, 
online about that, but uh, that's that's facts of facts, you know. Yeah, uh, and you actually came along at a great time uh, yeah. as far as an organization. Absolutely, um, one of the slowest de growing demographics in the outdoor and shooting industry is mm -hmm. the African American demographic. So Correct. the fact that you're actually taking somebody and saying, okay, this is what you do. This is how you handle it. This is how you carry yourself. And this is the history behind us. You, you really taking an educational approach uh, and not just putting somebody, you know, not just putting somebody out on the street saying, hey, here, here's a firearm and these are the rules behind it. Here's the history Correct. behind it and here's who fought for the very right uh, that you have to own one. Correct. And, and the thing to, to, your, to kind of co-tell what you're saying, one of the things that we're very proud of is that when you become a NAGA member, you know that you're not the first black person to own a firearm, nor will you be the last. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain level of expectation in terms of how you carry yourself on the range and outside of the range. Um, and that's something we're very, very proud of. Most of our folks um, are very, very proud of the fact that they are able to um, belong to the organization and, and they value that and they want to make sure that it, it's presented correctly. So um, well, you're a role model. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For everybody. Hmm. It's amazing. It really is. And uh, it's always good to see our industry growing. And I yeah. think one of the uh, most remarkable features of your um, organization is your non-political. You know, you take Democrats and Republicans, it don't matter what their uh, affiliation is, conservative, independent, everybody's there for a common cause. Correct. Everybody, and that's one of the, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, yeah, everybody's, you know, there for what your organization's about. They're there to learn and preserve our right to bear arms as Americans. Yeah. And that's something that, that's, that I think I'm probably most proud of as an organization because we take people from every walk of life every political perspective, and we put them in the same room and say, you know what? The one thing we all have in common is the appreciation for the country and, and our Second Amendment rights. So let's appreciate that, support that effort, and in doing that, let's learn how to shoot a gun and, and have a, a better organization. And that's something we've been very, very good at doing because uh, we have probably the most diverse base of folks you could ever even imagine. Um, and we, are, we allow people to be themselves. And uh, after most shootings, just kind of give you guys some insight in, in your listeners. Typically at the range, we go shoot, we'll come together, 40, 50, 50 of us shoot. After we shoot, we'll go have something to eat. And to me, that's when NAGA really shines because those conversations that take place, are they're, they're very uh, organic, they're natural. People talk about whatever they want to talk about. Now, we're not a political organization, but if you want to talk politics, you're, you're, you're free to do that. Now, you might get ask questions or they might have a, a vigorous discussion and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a saying in our organization that we really kind of, you know, hold ourselves to. We agree to disagree, but not disconnect. Meaning that if we're both at a, you and I are Chris at a, at a meeting and we go shoot, we have a great time. And after we're, after we're having hot dogs or pizza or whatever, um, we get into a conversation about, it could be AK-47s. I think we should not have AK-47s. You say, hey, everybody should have, you know, the right to carry that, that type of firearm. And we have a rigorous discussion. And after a while, we say, you know what? I'm not going to change your mind. And you're not going to change my mind. But let's be brothers. Let's be friends. Let's be good NACA members. And that's why I think the organization really shines because we have respect for one another, regardless of the perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of organizations are struggling to do that, where I think we've been able to thrive. And that's why so many people from so many different backgrounds are kind of gravitating to our organization because they know they can, you know, they can be themselves. Mm -hmm. obviously can get the, they can get the quality training that they're, they're going to need. But at the same time, um, you can hold your beliefs to your, you know, that are important to you. And I have to worry about that being compromised or being made fun of or anything like that. That's something we don't, we don't do and we don't allow that kind of, that kind of uh, discussion. Well, it's a rare quality that um, a lot of organizations can learn from um, because mm -hmm. the Second Amendment's a hot topic. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. And, absolutely. Um, you know, it's a battleground so to speak yeah. uh but the fact that you have both or all political um backgrounds or shooters yeah. or or shooting enthusiasts right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you know right. <laughs> we have a common ground and and that's something that uh, a lot of people can learn from 
Yeah, I think people, um, particularly in our organization, are learning that the Second Amendment is a right that that can't be assumed that's going to be there forever if we don't fight for it. Regardless of your color, regardless of your political leanings, the Second Amendment, if you're a shooter and you appreciate the, the ability to go out and buy a, a firearm and keep that at your at your home or on your own person, the Second Amendment has to be guarded. And I think that's something that as an organization, um, we need to start doing a little bit better, do more, a little bit more of. Now, we won't talk about politicians. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we'll be aggressive toward po policy that's going to affect the Second Amendment. And that's something that um, the organization um, is very, very uh, proactively um, going to be supporting, uh, you know, legislation that, that supports the Second Amendment, not chop it down. Um, so that's 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 what we're trying to do on a daily basis. And you know, it's a it's a it's a grow it's a growing process. Um, you learn as you go, and uh, and uh, we've been blessed so far to have some good some good wins. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to take a, a quick break to recognize some of our uh, sponsors here, Underwood Ammo. Thank you, Underwood. Uh, always has this standard of excellence. Uh, fantastic ammo. Uh, Phonescope, uh, who is, you know, accessories in optics. Uh, and, and, you know, you can use your phone to um, record and, and amplify uh, whatever you're viewing through your scope or your binoculars. Great product. And also Hunt of a Lifetime. Uh, we're going to hear from them in a moment. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> great, great, great to, see, great to see you, Chris. Um, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're talking, uh, uh, we're just speaking a little bit about policy and, and uh, non-politics and, and things of that nature in our uh, uh, last segment. Um, you know, there's a lot of legislation that's always being pushed forward uh, yeah. to, in, to inhibit our right to bear arms. Uh, and recently, uh, I think we we're looking at legislation that's um, looking to, geez, there's, there's so much to this. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's tough. Uh, gun registration, uh, where you have to register your, not just your guns, your ammo. Um, yeah. you uh, have to in take an insurance policy per gun, which makes it cost prohibitive uh, for anyone to own a gun, uh, no matter what your financial bracket is. Um, your search and seizure, I think that's your Fourth Amendment, right? Um, ATF will be able to come into your house without a, a warrant and confiscate guns. Uh, Gun manufacturers could be sued uh, for somebody that gets shot or whatever. Uh, th there's so much, that's even psychological evaluations. Um, what are your thoughts on this? I think it's the most dangerous thing that we're going to be facing for this year and, and moving forward. Um, and I don't like to demonize any kind of Americans. You know, we're all Americans, but we all have different views of our, our America in the future. And I'll just say this to anyone that is anti-gun or doesn't believe a gun is a, is a value add to the, our, our, our country. Um, if you start taking away those liberties and those things that, um, as relates to the firearm, what you're going to do is have such a watered down um, version of the Second Amendment. It will be literally, you're leaving just a few people that can literally go out and afford to buy the gun because now you have, you have to buy insurance. 
you have to buy, take a class that's mandatory. The class is probably more than the gun itself. Then you have a waiting period in some cases, you know, 30, 60, 90 days that they're proposing. So now you're looking at three months to get a gun plus an additional thousand dollars on top of the price of the gun. Sure. And that is really going to affect a lot of people, particularly African-Americans and those individuals that are, have, have limited budgets or mm -hmm. li limited income. Um, and I think that is um, very, very dangerous. And we need to really come together as a group, regardless of who, what organizations we are belonging to and kind of form a, a coalition. Because the other side is, they're forming relationships and strategies to take away those gun rights from us. So we need to do the same on our side and be that much more aggressive um, in a positive way um, to make sure we have those Second Amendment rights. And I'm, I'm just a firm believer of that. Well, I think one of the most glaring um, aspects of this new uh, bill they're trying to put forward is the psychological evaluations. Um, yeah. Because it's not just you that's going to have to go through the evaluation. Everybody that lives in your household, your wife, your kids, uh, you have um, your in-laws or your parents living with you, they're yeah. going to have to go under a psychological exam as well. Uh, because mm -hmm. there'll be a firearm in the house uh, and they're trying to evaluate if you are of sound mind to own a gun and then they take it even further they'll uh, speak to your ex-spouse your ex-wife your ex-husband uh, yeah. some of your associates that you work with um, and they'll see what your mindset is to see if uh, you qualify to own a firearm that's very dangerous. Yeah, I, I think you go down that rabbit hole and it can go so many directions where after a while it is, they can literally pick you off on how not to get a gun at some point in, 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 the, in this process. You could be talking to an ex that you dated who said, yep. who said, you know, he has a bad temper or she has a bad temper. They don't need a gun. It could be somebody that has, you know, um, ill intent for you and not allow you to get a gun. So. I think that is problematic and we need to fight, you know, very, very aggressively to make sure that doesn't um, get passed in any state here in the union. They can, they can knock you on the uh, psych eval for anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the easiest thing to say, well, you're not qualified. 90% of the people would not pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, I mean, I have an older uh, mother. Just think, you know, in, in my case, if she was living with me. Um, they could disqualify her based on something that she might have that doesn't really affect anybody, but they could use that as an excuse. So it can be very, very dangerous. I think we need to really fight uh, and have some folks in place that have our best interests yeah. um, to, to be watch keepers over, all those, over this whole process. I, I think the fact that they are trying to open the door to sue gun manufacturers uh, mm -hmm. is very shaky grounds because you know the gun is an object Correct. you could put your gun over in the corner and it's not going to jump up and shoot you it can't right. take action unless it's in the wrong hands um, more people are killed by cars than i think anything else in this country every year uh, yeah. Does that open the door where we could sue a gun manufacturer for a car accident? Yeah, they're stretching. They're looking for excuses. They're trying to, I think they're trying to take a playbook out of the tobacco industry and how they circled back and said, okay, you use tobacco, you now can, can sue those tobacco companies. Yeah. Um, but I think this, we got to really, you know, as I said before, and I'll repeat, to, repeat this till I die. We got we to stick together and we got to put some, some folks and co coalitions together that can push back on this nonsense because it, it is definitely out there and we have to, you know, recognize it for what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, how, what is, uh, getting back to your organization, sure. um, how does somebody qualify to be a member of your uh, organization? Is there a vetting system or, you know? We are open to any and everybody, uh, male, female, Republican, Democrat, rich, poor, black, white, Asian, Latino, it doesn't matter. Um, the only thing that would disqualify you is a felony, because obviously mm -hmm. if you have a felony, you can't touch a gun. Um, and, and I have my own feelings about felonies. You know, obviously if, if a person's a, a good guy and they've been working for 20 years and have no, no problems, I think they should have that right. But as it stands right now, we can't afford uh, from a legal perspective to have someone 
um, to do something that, to grab a gun because that's against the law and we have to certainly have to abide by the law. Um, but anyone who can qualify, we welcome any and everybody, um, regardless of your age, regardless of uh, um, your perspective, you're welcome to come. And uh, we try to have a family environment. You hear that term a lot. If, if you look online, you see the word fam or family, which mm -hmm. means once you join, you're part of the brotherhood and sisterhood, um, regardless of where you're located, regardless of where you, uh, uh, what you're doing. And that's something we're very, very proud of. So um, anybody can qualify to answer your question. That's great. And um, you're in almost every state right now. Yeah, we have members in every state. Chapter wise, I think we're like, we're in 40 of 50 states right now. We're, we're getting close to having chapters in every state at 125, 150 or so. But uh, pretty soon we'll be, we'll literally be in every state. Every, how, does somebody, how does somebody go about starting a chapter? It's very simple. We, you have to be an AGA member, first of all, first and foremost. You have to be in good standing, uh, chapter, you know, um, member wise. Uh, you have to be in the organization at least three months. Um, after those three months, uh, then you can go ahead and apply to be a chapter president. We typically like to ask someone that has at least an understanding of uh, firearms. It's not mandatory, but um, to be a president, because you can always bring in, you know, qualified instructors and qualified range safety officers for each of your events. But it helps if you have a little understanding of, of a firearm. Once that happens, you can then go ahead and start your chapter. Um, give it a name, any name that you think is relevant. And uh, some of the chapters have different focus. Some chapters are focused on strictly self-defense. Some chapters are focused on, hey, we like to skate shoot and trap. That's what they do. So you can make your chapter focus on any, anything that you want or just everything. Um, and that's how the chapters have a little bit of a personality. You might go to one chapter and they're doing this and go to another chapter and they might be doing something totally different. But it's all for the folks that are in that particular area and what they want to do on a week to week, month to month basis. So, um, and that's that's really good. You know, I, obviously, I would like them as you know the president president to have a lot of focus on self defense, <laughs> but yeah. that's not up to that's that's not up to me. That's up to them um, to, to make that call. So you you uh, give a lot of flexibility and and latitude. Yeah, to, 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 to start a chapter, there's a lot of uh, flexibility, but there are. Uh, a vetting process. It's very simple, but it is a process that you go through. You, uh, our chapter development director, Oliver Price, um, he'll get your information. Every chapter president has to go through a background check. That's mandatory. And the reason why it is mandatory, we don't want anyone who has any type of uh, record, um, good or bad, uh, I mean, a bad record running a chapter, because that, that can be a very dangerous thing, particularly if someone has a felony. They're saying they don't have a felony, but when you run the background, they do have a felony. And that's something we're, we're very careful of making sure it doesn't happen. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like uh, you are going to be growing expeditiously in the uh, <laughs> coming years. And yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're happy to be partnered with you and moving forward. Let's uh, see what we can do together. Absolutely. And we're very excited about the partnership. Um, we've got a ton of hunters, particularly in the Southeast, that are just, you know, very excited about the relationship and partnership. And I think it's going to grow very, very uh, large and very, very fast. So um, we're, we're really clapping our hands and you know, all excited and ready to go. <laughs> all right. So where can we find you? You go to www.naaga.co. That's co, not .com. And go to our website. Um, very easy to join. But I recommend to everyone, go to the site and read. Just read about the organization first and foremost be, before you join. And I think after reading the information, the quality, and you'll see the, the standards that we put in place, you'll be impressed and you'll want to join the organization. Um, and that's, 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 that's one of the strengths of the organization because we have a very solid foundation. Um, but you can go there and, and check us out and, and hopefully you'll get a, um, the inkling to join. We would love to have you. Great. I appreciate your time. And uh, we look forward to moving forward and hearing more about your more organization uh, and going from there. Hey, Chris, it's an honor to talk to you guys and your, your listeners and definitely uh, would love to come back and have another chat with you guys. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks again.